The voice of God is upon the waters. In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. It would be too easy to begin with my outrage. And yet, as we have seen this week, outrage, especially white privileged outrage, leads us into very terrible places that can undo our lives as a democratic and civil society. And I need to say that I think it's the same white anger and rage that has been punishing black Americans for over 400 years. But today, I want to invite you into a gentler story to help us enter the waters of baptism. For it is in the waters of baptism that we find our creation and redemption as Christ's own forever. So a few days ago, I heard a TED talk by one of the founders of a favorite NPR program called Radio Lab. This person has been on a multi-year search for a way to tell compelling stories that show the complexity of human truth without shying away from division or difference that is far ranging. And this person told a story about the last two years in which he went in search for what might bring us together in ways that both respect the good and critically examine the harm in how we see our differences. And he found his answer in part in 2019 by interviewing Dolly Parton and going to a series of Dolly Parton concerts. So what this person learned by attending Dolly Parton concerts is that everybody was welcome. And that ranged from the people he expected to show up flag-waving, make America great hat-wearing folks to people who were in dress clothes, that was a little less expected, to people who clearly were progressive and liberal, I suspect by what was on their buttons or t-shirts, and then the real surprise, a few folks with Black Lives Matter on their clothing. And they all cheered and they all yelled for more music and they sang and they enjoyed Dolly Parton and each other. And you were saying, so what, Mary? So what? It's just a concert. And this person went on to say that after better than a year of being on this journey, he had come to understand that what Dolly Parton speaks between songs and in her songs is an explicit message about forgiveness and love and how hard and heartbreaking it is to forgive and to love. And don't we know it? And folks hear this and they take it all in and what happens is that for a very short while a space gets created for just a moment in which people can be authentically themselves without erasing their best selves in their differences, all the while being respectfully related to others. Others who are so different from them. And my friends, I gotta say, that is the single best secular explanation of that theological idea that I talk about in sermons all the time of what it means to be a new creation. And it's the best one I have ever heard. So today we come to a story about Jesus that is all about new creation. 
he being the chief example in both human and divine terms. And this baptism must have surprised the heck out of John the Baptist. Because it's all about entering the rather unimpressive waters of the Jordan. I've been there, I know that. To share fully in our humanity, especially the icky parts. You know, all those unforgiving and unloving and prideful, angry, fearful, deluded, depressed, raging, dirty little pieces of being fully human. Those places that I know in my heart are very hard when it comes to respecting the dignity of every human person. And what God does when Jesus enters those waters is trouble the waters, trouble the waters of all that ick. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, that's what happens, the spiritual says, emerging while God speaks out loud, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. You bathed in everything that keeps them from me so you can redeem it. And I love you, my child, for being so brave. What Jesus does in this act of baptism is create the space, the place, the relationship with God for us, for each and every one of us, in which we both understand all that makes us human, makes us so different from God, and is often so bad and sinful, and also what is so gloriously possible. We don't have to do a thousand spiritual exercises a day or avoid all the cracks of life in creation. The baptismal covenant just assumes we're going to get it very wrong some days. We don't have to be perfect just for God, maybe to love us. Instead, Jesus in this one act brings all that creatureliness, that humanity into a restored image of God. This baptism creates the community that helps us to see the hope that no matter what is spinning out of control, what has gone awry with respect to forgiveness and love, we will be forgiven and loved. Now, it's important to say here that we do this with God's help. And we have to trust and accept the grace of this gift that is given. You can't keep marching around claiming Geez, I would be, I could be, I should be loving and forgiving if the devil hadn't stolen that away from me. Jesus shares our full humanity. And while, as my least favorite hymn says, Jesus is the sinless one to Jordan came, he has swum in the absolute swamp. The absolute swamp is not the sewer of who we are when we are at our worst. And moreover, he has trouble. He has troubled the water. So it becomes no ordinary cleansing. It becomes that Thin space, place, possibility to be changed into the unique person God has made each and every one of us beloved 
and available to love this achy, heartbroken, sin-filled world full of folks just like us. It is that love, that forgiveness that changes everything. So what's different here from a Dolly Parton concert is that this is not a one concert opportunity. Baptism, as we will vo voice in a moment in our baptismal covenant renewal today, creates a household of God. That's what the church is. Like it or not, in Christ, we are all related. Oh, dear. That's what a congregation is. We are the family to whom you come home to be loved and forgiven. We are the open door, the open hearts to any stranger that says, by God's grace, we will love you and forgive you, and in doing so, trouble the muck of your life in ways that we believe and we hope will help you know that wherever you are, you know that you are loved and forgiven and that a relationship with God, with the household of God, is yours at any time. We are not a one-night stand. We are the community of faith in all times and in all places until the Lord Jesus takes us all home to God. By baptism, each of us is a new creation as surely as Jesus. Forgiveness and love, forgiveness and love, love and forgiveness. You know, that's all we really have in this life. And Jesus is troubling the waters of our lives. And for that, I say, Alleluia. So wade in the water. Wade in the water. Wade in the water, children. Wade in the water. God's going to trouble the water. Let the waters of your life be troubled by the Holy Spirit. Because as John Lewis said, out of that holy water comes good trouble. And perhaps a voice from heaven may be saying to you and to me this day, these are my children, my beloved and in their love and forgiveness. I am well pleased. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.